In the last session, we discussed about the calculate in detail. And also we discussed about the calculate table and filter function. Also, we discussed about the difference between all these three, right? So cal what is the difference between calculate and calculate table? And what is the difference between calculate table and filter function? Also, we discussed it. And today, and also we discussed about the all function. And all function was very much helpful in terms of uh, removing the filter. Uh, since uh, all function removes the filter, we are able to calculate uh, the percentage or the ratio, right? So, so out of the total sales, um, you know, what is the contribution of each and every category, right? So in terms of percentage. And also using all function, we can, uh, you know, uh, we can clone the table. I just show you here. Let me, okay, this one has less number of data in it. So look here, I just go to the data view here. Okay, for the sake of consistency, I just uh, go to this one. And uh, here we have used uh, the last session code. I just go to the data view. So it takes time, right, to populate the data with this data itself. Now you understood. So how difficult working in the real time scenario data, right? Huge volume. Okay. So now what I do is I just uh, go and click on the new table. All function returns the table itself. Okay, the value of the entire table. Using all function, uh, we can not only remove the filters on the specific column or a table but also we can uh, you know, clone the table. If you want to clone a table, you can use all function. I'll just show you quickly. It's give a minute, okay, it, it takes time, okay. Good, so this is my table. So how to create a table? Okay, so here um, in the data view, just click on the new table. Okay, I just show you here. So this is a new table. Why it's not working here? Let me close this. Give me a moment. Okay, it will not take much time. So in the data view, this is what I'm talking about, the data view, we just click on the new table, okay? So what I do is I do it, redo it one more time. I just click on the new table. It will take for a while. Now uh, it and now we can see that uh, the table equal sign here. And then just beneath this, we can see the column here, empty column here. So what I'm going to do is here, uh, I just create uh, the... Oh my God, I pressed enter mistakenly. Just give me a second. It's a painful thing. Ideally, it should not happen. It's killing our productivity. It should prompt to, you know, prompt the user whether you want to close it or so. Okay, here uh, I am going to use all function. Look here, I have a table by the name of calendar is already available here. Look here, uh, here it is displaying all the functions or the tables that are available, you know, here, right? All the tables with the column names also it displays. Here I just select the call a calendar and I'm going to close this. Again. So all function, all is a function. Hence it starts with, uh, followed by the all, it, it starts with open parenthesis. 
and then uh, you have the closed parenthesis inside this we specify the table name okay in this case um, here what i do is um, i want to duplicate this table i want to create another table uh, wherein it should hold the uh, date related information what i do is i just give some meaningful name here so in the real time scenario we will be using some meaningful name like this dim date which means the date dimension remember this and then what i do is i just press enter the entire table data of the calendar will get copied to this new table dim date so according to us this is a variable since i have clicked the new table and then i just uh, specified this command right on the equal sign on the right side of the equal sign i use the all function and then the existing table calendar i pass this one as an argument and then what happens when i press enter the entire calendar table data got copied to the dim date variable since dim date uh, is a table we cannot say it's a variable it's a table now okay the dim date table is holding the clone of or the copy of my calendar table clone is nothing but xerox taking the xerox copy of you know copying the entire data that is what uh, the clone is all about okay so fine so the next one is uh, so that is the advantage of using all so there are two purpose using all one is to remove the filter and other one is to create um, uh, to create a clone of a table existing table or to copy the existing data tables data to another table we use all function next we will move ahead and uh, understand what exactly the all selected function so all is really good look here so this is the one we created it i just uh, increase the font size this is the you know straightforward way of doing it in real time scenario you just use this search feature because it's the it is pretty faster because in the real time you need to work fast because the deadlines are very very stringent look here in this case the percentage of sales all look here i just copy pasted this one i have used the divide function the total sales is the measure already exists this one okay and then all measure <clears throat> all function uh, all measure right so all measure this is the variable this variable see this variable i used it reused it here okay and what this variable is holding the total sales sum of uh, sales all function i used it on this table whatever the filter comes that you remove it both the internal as sorry the external as well as the internal filter that is what the all function does it so since it is removed this one it is displaying this one right and in the denominator of uh, you know this one so this numerator and the denominator uh, if you do it you will if you uh, divide the numerator by this value each and every row of this value right uh, you will get the percentage of sales so now you understood the advantage of all function all function helps us to remove the filter hence it is removing the filter we are able to display the overall sales and all these three category put together we are able to display it across the rows since we are able to display it across the rows we are able to uh, divide uh, the each um, categories uh, total sales uh, by the overall sales hence we are able to get the percentage what is the percentage of revenue contribution by each category out of the total sales so next uh, we will quickly take a look at the all selected all selected is also very interesting uh, function with that you can go one step further and you can do further analysis i just show you here so what i do is in the interest of time time is very much important um okay what i do is i just uh, copy this one and then that's what uh, you guys needs to be uh, smart okay work smart don't work hard so click on the new measure reuse the existing core if anything is there but make sure that the biggest uh, issue with the um, um you know the, the reusability you know the existing code if you use it make sure that you are uh, making the appropriate changes correctly otherwise it will cause a major problem so here i just uh, for your sake of understanding i just uh, specify it as all selected 
all selected is a function like all function but uh, it is different slightly different and here i just remove the all because you want to learn the all selected look here all selected function is already it is available the, the built-in function it is readily available we are going to simply reuse that that's it i just press enter and then what i do is I just select this one and then I just put it here. I just go to the insert um, ribbon and I click on the text box and then I put it here. I just keep this somewhere here. Okay. Uh, this is the one. What I do is I just go and look here. This is the one I created a while ago. I just drag and drop this here. Now what is happening? So what changes that you see it now? When you compare these two columns, the all selected as well as the all measure, both of them display the same value. Isn't it? Both of them display the same value. Then why should I use all selected? Okay. So you can use all selected for two different purposes. The all selected function, like all function, it disregards the internal filter, but it um, obeys the external filter. It respects the external filter. That is the difference between all and all selected. It's something like um, simple analogies, right? Um, so you are, you respect your parents, right? All selected respect your uh, okay, okay. Do not respect your parents. You know, you, you, you know people in your house, but they respect outside people. It's something. Like that. But all it doesn't respect both internal filter as well as the external filter. Okay, but all selected. It doesn't respect the internal filter, the row level, column level filter. It doesn't, uh, you know, it will simply invalidate that like all function, whereas it obeys the external filter. For example, look here, if I select furniture, if I select furniture, You need to hold your control key if you want to select more than one values in the slicer. Look here, I have selected technology as well as the furniture, right? I selected these two things. Now let us compare the values that are there in the all and all selected. Earlier we, uh, we saw that, you know, these two were having same values. Earlier, we were seeing that both of them were having the same value. So uh, the 1.13 1, 1 million was there here also. Now, there is a difference here. So with this, we are able to understand very clearly. It, um, look, but um, if you see here, 8381, yeah, this value, right? It is repeating this value across these rows. So all selected function respects the external filter whereas it disregards the internal like row level column level it, it disregards that it's as simple as that is the difference between these two. but if you clear the values that you selected as part of the slicer and uh, but you will tempted to think these two functions uh, behavior remains same but it is not exactly the same okay i just go ahead and select the furniture as well as the technology and now we can see this one. So now what, what is your understanding now? So here in this case, what happened? Uh, the all selected function, it respects the external filter. Internal filter, it still disregards that. The moment when I selected these two items and this slicer, uh, only these two values, furniture and the related values got updated here. Only these two values are visible here. So for these two visible categories, it gives us the total salary, total sales. Okay, so 45 plus 38, roughly 78, um, 83, right? 
it gives 83 and then but if you see here still uh, he doesn't respect both the things okay external as well as the internal thing it uh, this total is uh, this total sales is related to all these three categories though we selected only two categories it um it, it still remains as it is okay the total okay that is the beauty of all function and then next one is okay this one uh, also same the next one is all selected if you see here all selected uh, it displays the only furniture and technology related total sales but uh, in this case what happens only for those categories that are visible right the, the corresponding total value the total value for those two categories that are visible that total value it is repeating it across the rows that's all now you might be asking this when why it has to repeat this total this total we, you understood okay because you need to divide each and every category value uh, out of the total um, sales value so that you can get get to know the percentage of contribution of each category in terms of the sales right sales percentage but in this case what happens okay out of the total sales, these three categories put together, what is the contribution of these two categories, these two visible categories contribution? Now the question is, okay, now, you know, why do we need to use this one, all selected in this case? In this case, what happens is, uh, okay, out of the total sales, what is the contribution of these two, cat the, these two visible categories uh, uh, revenue contribution? But here, so what is the uh, contribution of each category out of this total visible categories total? Sorry, the total sales of these two categories, visible categories um, contribution. So 38 lakhs 70,000 divided by this one, 45 lakhs divided by this one. This percentage is different and this percentage is different. You all agree with me or not? Are you able to understand or not? Any, any, are you able to understand or not? Or can I repeat it? Okay, I'll repeat one more time. See, your manager wants to know what is the revenue contribution by um, out of, so compared to the total sales, what is this value? All these three categories put together, what is the total sales? He wants to know, you know, what is the, total, the sales contribution by each category? Furniture, what is the total sales for furniture? 38 lakhs, 70,000. You need to divide this by this value. So that you will get this one. So with this, you can say, hey, uh, 34 percentage of uh, contribution, the revenue contribution from furniture, we could see that. And 40 percentage of um, revenue contribution came from technology out of the total sales, all these three categories put together. Fine. This is the next step. So next question, what he is asking is, okay, this percentage is fine. So can I know uh, out of these two, to, uh, you know, uh, visible categories, total sales, how much each category's contribution? So 38 lakhs, 70,000 divided by this one, this one. So that, that is the one will give you the another perspective of your analytics. With that, you will get to know, uh, you know, so, some other insights, right? So what we will do is um, we are going to create the same measure, percentage of all selected, percentage of sales all selected divided by. So now what we do is, we need to take this value in the numerator and then the denominator, we need to keep this value, right? We need to use this value. So if you do this one, you will get the percentage of revenue contribution by these visible category out of this total uh, sales of these two visible category categories. Got it? That is what we are going to do. Very simple one. Since you're all uh, completely new into analytics, it will take some time to understand. Don't worry, okay? But you need to keep reviewed, that's all. It's a very simple one. So I, what I do is I just click on the new measure. Okay, here I have used the all selector, right? So I just remove this one. 
all select measure here itself we can see that look here this is what so i just took uh, this value or uh, total say sum of sales uh, you know this one okay divided by this one each and every category total sales divided by this value now so all selected measure this is the one right all uh, all selected measure total sales this is the one i just put in the denominator that's all I just drag and drop this out here. Obviously, this percentage, uh, you know, is more than this one because uh, you are dividing because the denominator value is very high here because uh, all these three categories put together display the total sales. Whereas in this case, you are using you are excluding uh, the office supply because office supply is not displayed here so what you are doing is your your denominator value is lesser in this case compared to this hence the percentage will be more so 46 percentage of revenue we got it from furniture out of uh, these two categories put together right so these two categories put together what are the total is out of which furniture we made 46 percentage and similarly in technology we made 54 percent of sales so this is an additional insight which can be helpful to the stakeholders to derive or uh, you know far fine tune their strategy right uh, the business strategy with that they should be able to understand okay which category is really doing good and uh, what is the revenue contribution which um, category is uh, really doing good. but by looking at this itself you can understand technology contribution is more uh, compared to this one for example if i select office supplies so what happens here is, uh, yeah, with this itself, we can tell, right? So with this itself, we can tell 0 0.26 and 0 0.34. Now both of them look similar, okay? Because uh, for uh, for all these things, right, you are doing the same thing. But when you select, uh, let me do one thing. I just, okay, okay, let me do one thing. I just uh, exclude technology. And if you see here, uh, yeah, these two uh, percentage, if you compare it, this one is more. Obviously, this one, uh, you know, is more. With this itself, we can decide, but there are situations this one can, in this case, ordinary. Uh, so we uh, we have um, just um, have only two values here, right, in the category. When you have more number of categories, you will get to know about the advantage of this one, okay? But this is the difference, okay, between uh, the all and all selected next one is i'm going to use the all except all except is also very much um, helpful so what i am going to do is i'm going to use the all except function so what is all except it remove all the filters except the column name that you are using in your thing okay in your um, function okay Okay, what I will do is, see, before I start with the all uh, except, I just tell you the best practice. This is not the right way of creating the measures. In the real-time scenario, you are not supposed to create it, uh, the measures like this. So what you need to do is to keep all the measures. You need to keep all the measures in a separate table. So what I do is, quickly, I just go to the new table. I saw the new table. What I do is I just go to the data view, listen very carefully. And here, if you see the table tools, and then what is that here? Okay, okay, okay not here. We should be able to enter the data. Enter data. Can you see somewhere here? Uh, new table, new column, manage. Uh, this is the one I 
okay external tools not that one in the modeling only we will be seeing it here new column new measure and new table okay and new table let me just see that Mm, not this one here. World where it got disappeared. Mm, it should appear here. Mark as table and manner new measure, new table. See, even for me, at times, right, it is confusing me. So that's the reason why you need to keep keep work on it. Enter data, yeah, in the home home ribbon, right? You have enter data. Sorry, in the home ribbon, it is there, enter data. Because hardly we use this one, right? So we don't use it more frequently. But uh, before we create any um, measures, we make sure that we are creating a dedicated table. It is also called as a disconnect table. So in the intro, they'll ask you, what is a disconnect table? I don't know how many of you watch my shots in my YouTube disconnect table, okay? This table, we don't use it with any other table. So if you go to the um, pivot, look here. What do you mean by disconnect table? This connect table is not connected with any other table. Uh, okay, I just first create this one and then we will, uh, what I'm going to do is I just create um, column one. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do anything here. Simply I click on load. Okay, it got loaded, right? So the, okay, apply changes. Table two, because already I have another table. Okay, so this is the one got created with table two. What I do is I just uh, click on this one, double click on it, and then give some meaningful name, sales analytics measures. This is the one we use it uh, specifically to keep all the measures, whatever we created. Okay. This is the one is going to hold all the measures henceforth. Okay. Look here. I just click on it. I just expanded it. And when I collapse it, or for example, let me do one thing. I just select this one. When you select this one, you will get to know what are the columns that you used it. And for example, I just click on the all selected. Look here, I just clicked on it here. I just selected this visual so that all the columns and the measures, whatever I have used as part of this visual got highlighted here. Fine, uh, the tick mark with the tick mark variable. So look here, I just clicked on this one. I can see that all selected. What I do is here, right? So in this place, in this place, Look okay, at all select the same thing, all selected measure. You can see it here, right? You can see it here. And then the home table, what you need to do is you need to go and select. Sorry. Oh my God. So why it is doing something else? The big pen created problem. Okay. So here, what I what you need to do is in order to keep this measure all selected measure. Look here, all selected measure here, right? So you need to keep that. You need to move this to the newly created table. Which table? Sales analytics measure. Okay. So for this, you just click on this one here. Sales analytics. This is the table we created just now. I told you this is a disconnected table, isn't it? So this is where we keep all our measures. Again, logically, we keep uh, the measures. For example, in this, uh, if I want to keep all the KPIs in a separate um, thing, again, we can create a folder within this table itself. Let's go step by step. 
So now what I do is I quickly, I just do some kind of, I just tidy up all these things, okay? And I just selected all measure and then I move it to my sales analytics measure. Look here, now everything is getting, all the measures are getting pushed to or moved to the relevant one, okay? And uh, the, the dedicated measures table, okay? And the uh, next one is, I just scroll this down here. And uh, here I have another thing, okay? And uh, sales analytics measure. Okay, uh, now you understood, you got an idea. I don't want to do everything now. It will take time because uh, we hardly we are having less number of time, right? So less amount of time. So next one is, okay, this is how we need to, see, so you need to create a dedicated uh, measures table. That is where you need to keep all your measures. And for what we do is we just click uh, next to this, the dedicated table, which we created to hold the measure. Look here. And now what I do is I just look here in this table, the one I created here, right? Enter data. This is the one I used it. This is available under home ribbon. Okay. Remember this. Okay. So what you do is you just uh, next to this column one, this column one is not required to, uh, you know, for us, we can hide it. Either we can delete it or you can delete it or you can hide it because that is not at all required, right? Because when you create a table, it should not have a any blank value. At least you should have one column. Without having a single column, you cannot create a table. That's the reason why we created a table with a dummy column. That column, I have hidden it now. Okay, and next one is, look here. Along with this table, which we created uh, to hold all the measures, the icon got changed now, right? Earlier, it was showing the table kind of icon. Now it shows the calculator kind of icon. With this, you should be able to understand uh, the, the this table is meant for uh, you know the measures. This is the one is holding all the measures, so that the, these tables will have your business columns, and this table will have all your measures in it, so that logically it will be neat and clean. So that later point, if you want to refer it, you can refer it. So okay, now we will quickly uh, jump on to understanding the all except function. So now what I'm going to do is I just um, copy the same thing and I just go to the, either you can go to modeling also, you can, go, or we can go here, the best practice, right? Next to that, you can click on the three dots, which is nothing but the ellipse and you will find the new measure here itself. You click on it. So that uh, the measure which I'm going to create, that one will become part of this. And I don't have to keep pushing, moving it to this one, creating it uh, somewhere else and moving it, you know, the other. So on the fly, you can do it, okay. The next one is all selected, all except measure. Uh, okay, okay, I need to use first that one, right? <laughs> one second, I'll just... I'm going to teach you the all DAX studio also today. Uh, what I'm going to do is okay, let it be there. All except measure. I just press enter, it'll throw on, sorry, um, it will not throw an error. Wait. Here um all except measure. Okay, okay. Here all except. So look here, here we have the function that is available. But uh, the uh, the one difference which you notice here is compared to the all uh, function as well as the all selected, the case of all except, the syntax is slightly different. Look here, the table name, first argument is your table name and then you need to specify your column name. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I just move the sales W04 as the table name and the next what I do is, here I just say, specify the sales uh, underscore W04 and the co category column, I'm going to use it. But if you look at the below table, I have used the category here, right? So hence, uh, I'm going to um, use the category here. Okay, fine. 
all except measure instead of all all select i've used all except but uh, in the case of all except you need to specify the first argument as the table name and then you need to specify the column you cannot directly specify the column name like how we did it in other two functions in this case there is a slight change here okay fine the next step is uh, we need to uh, i just drag and drop this one all except measure look here so now it it uh, it is i don't have to search it here and there. look here now it made my job pretty simple look here all except so if you see here all except value here right so the, this one is somewhat similar to this one okay the all selected now you need to load notice these three things all selected all function and then all except in in both the cases all function what happened it disregarded the internal as well as the external filters whereas in the case of all selected it disregarded the internal filter but it respected the external filter but whereas in this case it respected the internal as well as the external filter because we have used the all except function all except function here what uh, we have done right um, we have used the column um, by the name of category so in that in that case what we are saying is except category rest of the columns you ignore the filter whereas for the category column don't ignore the filter so role so hence what happens for row level filter it is doing it uh, the row level and column level filter it is doing it that's all not much different now the question is okay then uh, if these two values are same then why should i use all except okay that's a good question so the next one is look here i just go and select uh, the technology also for your sake of understanding and if you see here, uh, these these two values are same, right? These two values are same, and these two values are same. And uh, but the difference is, uh, we have mentioned all except on category column, hence it is respecting both the internal as well as the external filter. Okay, now the question is, uh, what is the advantage of it? What is the application? Of, what is the real? So what is the use case? When can I use it? I just click on it one more time here and what I do here is um, okay let me do one thing yeah here I already used it all except category hmm. this is the one all except SFO measure for example I'm going to use this one okay so now we understood what is all except. So in this case, what happens? Uh, remove the filter on all the uh, uh, filter on both the internal as well as the external thing. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, remove the filter on all the other columns except category, which means the category column for the category column, the row level, column level filter as well as the external filter will get applied. That is what. So now the question is, why should I? Uh, what is the, why should I use this function? It is already uh, done. This functionality is achieved with this one itself. Why the hell should I use it? The reason is, for example, here, your manager is very particular about the San Francisco sales. You just want to see the San, the San Francisco sales by or by the breakdown of uh, these categories. In the furniture, how much sales we made it in San Francisco? And office supplies, how much sales we made in San Francisco. So in that kind of situation, you know, this one is very much helpful. Okay, what I do is I just drop this one. Look here, I just reuse this one. I don't want to um, look here. I This one is already there. So what I do is I just push it to my sales analytics measure table, this table. This for, you know, keeping our uh, thing in a very tidy thing. So now what I do is, you know, this all except is not much helpful. So what I am going to do is I am going to remove this one from here. All except measure total or series, right? I just remove this. And here is the SFO. Either you can drag and drop it or you just check on this one. The checkbox, if you check on it, this one will get dropped here and all except SFO measure. Now, if you see that, you know, these two columns are not same, right? These two column values are not same now. 
because we have used this filter condition here, San Francisco. Okay, so here what happened? Um, it shows, uh, for example, the management wants to in San Francisco alone, how much sales we made in furniture, how much sales we made in office supplies, and these two things put together, what is the total sales? Now, again, you can find out the total, you know, percentage or something else. So out of the total sales, what is the San Francisco sales percentage? Right, out of the uh, visible total, uh, you know, what is the contribution of, you know, uh, the sales in this? You can create another two columns if you want it, okay? So th the more the um, analysis you do, uh, right, you will get more insights. So now you understood the all except. All except function is helpful to remove all the filters except the column which you are mentioning it there, okay? The next one is, um, I forgot to tell you about the all selected function. Now you understood all selected function. What I will do is I just quickly go and create one measure. You just watch what I do here and I'll explain, okay? So using which also we can do the cumulative sales. Mm, filter what I do is in this case I use all selected and here uh, I'm going to use uh, the date column here mm, all selected here I just say the date Okay, in this case, I just have dim date. Let me check uh, whether uh, the dim date table has any relationship with this one. Yes, dim date, dim underscore date has a relationship. Hence, what I do is I'm going to use that one here. Dim date of date is less than or equal to max of dim date of date date. Let me check if this syntax is working uh, correctly or not. So here uh, everything is fine. Yeah, no error. Good. So here I have uh, used this column, uh, date column from my date table. Any of you will take a look at the date table also one more time. Okay. So in the date table, what I do is um, I use the all selected function. Okay. So what happens is, yes, uh, it will disregard the internal filter and it will still um, obey the external filter. And the next one is the dim date, the date column, less than or equal to max. So what is the max of date? Max of date will give you the recent date. 
okay so what happens is starting from the beginning of the date in your date table to till date what happens is it, it calculates the total sales so in that case i use uh, the all selected in this case what happens uh, it gives you the um, it it uh, you know the total value it will not filter your uh, to you know date in this case okay so for that purpose and if it filters what will happen you will get the same value you will not get the cumulative total okay so what i do is i just uh, let me check even i tried it long back this one whether it works or not um 38 lakh uh, 29000 it is not working fine so calculate total sales filter all selected dim date of date uh in this case um Okay, okay, what I do is I just try with the sales underscore W04. Well, before that, let me check, uh, uncheck all the things and then let me see. Uh, yeah, it displays the same thing, community values. It is not much helpful. What I do is I just uh, click on this one. Yeah, syntax is correct only. Okay, so I should use the dim date only here, but it is not working. Anyhow, uh, we will discuss this about, uh, you know, the, discuss this um, uh, during time intelligence. Okay, so there is some other thing we need to do it. I don't want to confuse you now at this moment. So you're yeah, at this moment, you just remember using all selected function also, we can, uh, the other advantage of all selected function is we can uh, come up with the cumulative sales. Okay. That I will show you with some other changes uh, when I explain you about the time integers function. So now you understood what is all, all selected, all except, and uh, when we can use, right? What scenarios we can use it. The scenario based questions they will ask you, you need to apply this concept. Don't say that you did not teach me, right? So the uh, I explained you with two scenarios. At the time of interview, you need to relate this. And then you need to um, answer it to them. Okay. And next one is a key filter and remove filter. Quickly, we will just, uh, you know, what I do is I just go to the search button here and key filter, remove filter. I did not do it here. Yeah, remove filter is there already. And I just, this is the uh, measure already created it. In the interest of time, I just uh, reuse the same thing. Okay. So here, calculate total sales and here the instead of all function. I have used the remove filters. That's all. In the case of all, uh, you remember the all measure, calculate, look at here, total sales, all function. Instead of all, I have used remove filters. Okay. What I do is, I just uh, uh, drag and drop this one. Filter sales. Okay. Now, if you compare these two columns, all function as well as the remove filter, these two remain the same, right? So what I'm going to do is I just select the furniture and then I select the office supplies. Mm, yeah, these two remove remains the same. You remember earlier when I cleared this one and all measure as well as the all selected, both of them uh, the, uh, displayed the same value. But the moment when I applied the filter using by selecting the specific values here, this one got changed, right? Uh, but let's see now, if I apply the filter, like all selected, whether it is getting safe, you know, filtered or not. Okay, what I do is I just select uh, the furniture, an office supply or anything else, whichever thing you need it, you can select it. Yes, but I want two things. Okay, two at least two, minimum two. But if you compare these two, are not same. Okay, because the all selected, uh, it respects the external filter. It still disregards this one. The remove filter value, if you see it, when you compare these two values, 
these two remain same even after applying the filter. Remove filter is also synonymous to your all measure. Both of them are more or less same. Now the question is then why they introduced uh, another function called remove filter? So logically, this is the one is correct, right? The naming convention, right? So because of naming convention thing, right? For that kind of situation, they use remove filter. Uh, see here, the, the advantage of using all function is remove the filter, the internal filter as well as the external filter. So the, what is the advantage of remove the filter? So hence what they did, they gave the meaningful name, remove filter. Instead of all, you can use remove filter, okay? That, that's all, not much difference, okay? Maybe what you do is you try cloning the table name uh, using like uh, all, all function was returning the table. You try cloning, uh, or why don't we try it now quickly? I just show you now itself. Because the interview, the questions are very dynamic because I'm going to put your uh, resume with a minimum three and up to four years experience. Uh, one second here, I just pause it. Table. Here, I'm going to use the listen or dim date. Look here, all is available. Can you see remove filter here? Remove filter itself is not available. So this is the difference, right? Otherwise, uh, it is same. Um, the using all function, we can remove the internal and external filter. Similarly, with the remove um, filter, also we can remove both the internal and external filter. But the difference is using all function, you can clone a table, whereas with remove filter, you cannot clone a table. You don't have that option, right? So that is the difference. That's all, guys. Fine. Okay. The uh, next one is the keep filter. Keep filter is also, we'll discuss this, uh, that one little later. Keep filter. Okay. And at this moment, um, whatever we discussed, you just, uh, you know, revisit it. Okay. The next, what I will do is I will just um, move on with something else called selected value. This is very important function and very helpful function, the selected value. Look here, I have created a page called cell well. So in this case, what happens, right? Uh, so look here, I have created a table uh, like this, which meant the enter data, okay? I just clicked on enter data. And here what I did, I just created furniture. I just typed furniture, office supply, technology. I, what I'll do is I'll do it one more time for the sake of you people. Furniture, sorry, not this one. Look here, if you mistakenly, if you, uh, you know, create another column, right click on it and delete it, okay? And here I need to have only one column. And here I just want to have the office supply. Here I need to have the technology. Okay, I just click on load. Like, I, like how I created uh, the measure table, right? Uh, we have created a dedicated table to hold all the measures, the same thing. But here, I just uh, created the values for the column. Okay, column. But in that case, I did not create any values. I just simply created a table, dummy table, empty table. That's all. Uh, this is the one. Okay, oh, I did not uh, load it, right? So table two, one second. Enter data. Okay, I just uh, type it quickly. Furniture and uh, ignore about this fellow typo. Okay, furniture, office, supplies. And the next one is the technology, tech. That's it. Click on load and it is a create table. 
Uh, here you can specify the table name. Okay, table three. Look here, table three. Here you can specify the table. Okay, dummy table. And then click on load. That's all. So that's how I created this one. Okay. Where is the dummy table? Hmm. Look at the dummy table got created, right? So this is the one holding all these values. What I did, I selected a slicer. And then what I did, I just simply moved this column one. This column in, is holding what values? The furniture, office supply, the same way I created it. Got it? Okay, now what I do is I just remove it. So in my slicer, and I have a table, right? So the table, disconnect table. Okay, I just um, unselect it now. Okay, what I did, I just created a measure called total QTY. I just rename it for the sake of um, naming convention and best practices. Look here, I have used the variable here. So we need to use variable wherever it is required for the sake of reusability. Uh, it is um, very much helpful uh, in the case of reusability, okay? Look here, I'll explain you, don't worry. So this is my variable, okay? Total quantity and equal to, here ideally total sales I should have given, anyhow let it be there. So uh, the, on the right side of the equal sign, I have mentioned the variable again. So get cat, okay? And selected value. And then what I did, so this is what my table and column one. What is this? This is the one. Uh, look here on the right side, right? So table column one. So in this table, look here. So this is the one I'm referring to. Okay. In this table, if I expand this one, you will find the column one. So in the column one only, when I dropped it in the slicer, we could see furniture, technology, appliances, right? So in, this is a table. The, that column is there. So what I do is I specified this table name. In this table, Use this column because in this column we have three values furniture, appliances, technology. These three values are there in this column of this table. Okay. So you just remember, okay. The, I, I, did, I did not explain what exactly the selected value is doing it. I, I just kind of a you know bottom up approach. Okay. I first explain the uh, and so on part, and then with that you should be able to understand. So now what I do is now uh, the return the next value is calculate sum of sales and for this one okay so what is this one selected value whatever the value that are there in in this column one the furniture appliances category when you know the, these values i have used it in my slicer whenever you select any value in your slicer that value will get uh, you know captured by this selected value and for example, in your slicer, when you click on the furniture category, that furniture, whatever you clicked, right, that one will be captured by this selected value function. And then it will store it into this variable. Now this variable is holding the furniture value in it. So now what I do is I'm reusing this variable. Since I defined it as a variable, how do you create a variable? First, you need to specify these three letters, var. Right, and followed by this, you need to specify your variable name. Your variable name can be anything, but give some meaningful name. Okay, don't give your name or your spouse name or something like that. Okay, or your kid's name or your fiance name. Okay, so var variable name, and followed by it, you need to specify the variable name. Okay, and then what will happen is you know whatever the value that you select in the slicer, that one will be captured behind the scene by the selected value, and then it will assign it to this variable. So now what you are doing is you are using the value here. So in the calculate, what you're doing, the filter condition, the sales W0. So the first one is your expression. Second one is your filter, right? Boolean filter. So in this case, what you're doing is in the sales W04 table in the category column. So whatever the value that I selected, you just, for that value, you calculate the total sales, full stop. Is it clear or not? Okay, I just give you the demo. So look here. Uh, here, okay, I created a measure, right? 
what is the measure name total quantity look here i just what we will do is yeah we will move it to that newly created sales analytics measures the dedicated measures table okay let it be there fine total quantity is you know is available what i do is now i just select a chord visual sorry i <laughs> mistake um, what i do is where is that thing okay let me use control c let me see if control c is working yeah fine good see um i did not click it on the empty space whenever you want to include a new uh, visual right you need to click on it on the empty thing but don't click on it double time this is another pain it will create a q and a visual so what you do is i'm going to i need another visual chord visual i just select it Chord visual is also very much helpful for uh, testing purpose and all. Okay, now what I do is I have created the newly I have created a new measure. This newly created measure I drop it here. We need to use it, isn't it? That's the reason why we have created this measure. The ultimate goal of this measure is whatever value that I selected, that value for that value for that matching value, it should go and filter my data. And then it should do the sum on the total sales or profit or quantity. Okay. So now look here. I just click on furniture. Furniture. Uh, okay. Let me do one thing here. Um, sum of sales, right? It is sum of sales. Ideally, it should be yeah sum of sales. Okay. What I do is I just rename this one with some meaningful name. Total sales. working on it okay it got created okay fine so if i select this one uh let me do one thing yeah total sales one got renamed or successfully okay total sales one total sales one in furniture category how much okay that is what we can see it here whatever the item that i selected based on which this is called dynamic right dynamically if you wanted to uh, perform some calculation or something like that, in that kind of situation this is very much helpful the selected value can also use selected uh, value function when you have two tables that do not have relationship in that kind of situation this is another use case selected value function is helpful to dynamically capture the value whatever you selected in your slicer and then with that you have filtered that behind this in right in the measure and then it gives you this one so what happens is i selected furniture in this measure what i did you know the furniture for the furniture what is the total sales? I computed it. That is what. If I select the technology, the technology will go and you know uh, get filtered here. Look here. I just show, show here. So here the technology will come here. So category equal to technology. For that technology category, you compute the total sales. That is what it is doing. It. The advantage selected values behind the scene, uh, it automatically it's something like you know CCTV, right? Uh, the, it behind the scene it captures you know what we do it. If I select office supplies, what we are doing is since it captures behind the scene what we do it in the slicer, what selection we make it, we are leveraging the selected value function and we store that value, the office supplies in a variable. And, and then what we do is we use that, reuse that variable. And then uh, we are filtering it from our category column. So now what happens is this is what is happening. So now what I do is I just click on it here and then I just drag and drop it here. total sales one right so here it shows uh, 29 to, to 1 dollar so this is for this is this is another another insight if, with this you can do another analytics can someone tell me let me see how many of you have um, good analytical thinking With this, what additional analytics you can do? See, in this case, what happened? I selected office supplies. It displays the office supplies total sales across the thing. 
right? If I select technology, in technology, how much sales we made? 4.51, that is the one, 45 lakh, 11,000. But it displays the technology total sales across the rows uh, or uh, across each category. So what is the use of this one? Again, you can use a divide function. So you can divide this one, right? So compared to um, technology sales, how much sales we made uh, with the furniture. So you can take this value profit and or if you say, you know, instead of profit, let's say you have sales. I just do one thing. I just... In fact, I thought of using profit and quantity also because all the time I'm talking about this one. One second, let me just go here. And then I just move this um, somewhat closer to total sales one, right? This is the total sales we made in furniture. So 38 lakh divided by this one, 29 like this one, this one, right? So compared to technology in furniture, how much total sales we made, okay? So that is the one. But here what happens is dynamically it changes. If I select uh, office supplies, office supplies totals is displayed across this one and furniture also displayed across this one. What you do is you percentage also you can say to whatever the item that I selected dynamically, uh, this value is getting changed and it displayed across the rows. Okay. And also if you want to see the percentage contribution, right now I furniture, right? So furniture, uh, uh, divided by furniture, it will be, uh, you know, nothing, right? So one, so this one, you know, one only, but this one divided by this one, this one divided by this one, how much you get it, right? So, or we, uh, furniture categories um, compared to, so other categories, right? Compared to the furniture, what is their revenue contribution? You can see that one, that kind of analytics, you can see it. You can do it. Now you understood the selected value function. Okay, the other advantage of selected value function is, so you know very well, uh, this is the one, the fundamental thing I discussed it. So if you wanted the date table to filter your sales table, or if you have some customer dimension table is there, if you want the customer dimension table to filter this one, you need to have the relationship. This relationship will get created automatically by Power BI. But in real time scenario, what we do is we create it manually. Okay, because not all the time it is reliable, but it depends on the project. Some projects, what we do, we leave it with the Power BI. We simply load the data, you create the relationship, fine. So next step is we go and validate it. We just click on it, we go and check whether the credit columns got uh, related. Look at the order date and date, right? So these two got related, fine, good. This is how we verify. The point what I'm trying to say is, you need to make sure that each and every table got linked all your dimension tables are linked with your this is a fact table okay in, in the case of star schema you have dimension tables surrounded by fact table the relation should should be there there are situations you don't have you don't have any relationship between the tables in that case only when you have the relationship between the tables it can do the filtering without relationship it cannot do the filtering so in that kind of situation you can go for selected value selected like i said right so look here I have used the selected value. Whatever I select it here, furniture. The first one is furniture. It will go and uh, filter it here. So furniture will, the corresponding value go and get filtered in my sales table. Whatever the value I selected in the disconnect table, that one will go and match the values that are available in my category, uh, the column. And then for that, it will show. Okay, it gives the uh, corresponding categories total sales that is possible uh, with the selected value function even though you don't have the relationship between the tables this is possible with selected value function this is another use case what are the scenarios can you tell me the scenarios see they, it's not like um, college um, question answer okay so, so can you tell me what is selected value function so using selected value function we can dynamically uh, select the values we can capture the values. For example, in the case of, um, you know, in my case, in one of the reports, we have a few of the reports we have used selected value. In the slicer, whatever uh, the items that we selected, that one will be captured automatically, automatically by the selected value. So that value will be stored in a variable. So that, you know, that variable will be using the filtering condition. So uh, sale category is equivalent to that variable, that variable is holding what value? This value furniture because I currently sell it. So for that, it gave me the total sales. 
if I select tagline, whatever the category that I selected behind the same, the corresponding total value should get displayed here. In this case, these two tables do not have any relationship, right? Sales W04 table and the table, what is that? The table, uh, the, the, the table, right? The table name is table itself. We don't have any relationship, right? In that kind of situation, uh, you can go in that kind of situation also we have used the selected value function and other advantage selected value function is uh, for example you wanted to uh, dynamically change the you remember we discussed conditional formatting in the table high low medium sales for high sales uh, give the background color as green medium sales give the amber low sales give red light right we manually went and configured so in that kind of situation, what we do is we can use a slicer, right? High, medium, say, right? So colors, right? We can select it. That also I will show you later point in time. The, the advanced part, this upcoming Tuesday, we'll discuss about it. Okay, all dynamic, everything, all dynamic thing. They'll, the interview, they'll ask you dynamic reporting, dynamic dashboard, everything they will ask you. Okay, the whole advantage of software is we want to automate it. We want to make it as dynamic as possible. There should not be any manual intervention. That's the whole idea of the software, right? Or any software application you take it, that is what they want to do it. So here, the advantage selected value function is in case of any disconnected tables are there. So in that kind of situation, also you want to do some kind of filtering, you can use selected value function. Apart from this, if you want to dynamically select the value and you want to uh, display or perform some kind of computation for the dynamically selected value, in that kind of situation, you can use selected value. And also in the case of conditional formatting, also you can use the selected value function. Plus, we have something called dynamic rank and the top uh, sales function. In that kind of situation, also we will we can use it. Don't worry, selected value. When I explain you about the rank function, top function, that time I'll demonstrate you once again. But remember this one. Okay, now you understood what is um, selected value function.